a low heat run for a color cuffs here. Today I'm coloring this photo that I took in the elementary school of Bodie, Bodie, California, which is a state historic park now in the Eastern Sierra, about maybe half an hour north of Mammoth Lakes, California. It's very close to Bridgeport. So Bodie was a gold and silver mining town from the days of the California gold rush and it had its heydays in the late 1800s and I have visited Bodie many times before and at some point I wanted to go really I really wanted to go inside the buildings and this is one of them so this is the school building took a lot of shots there which you saw at the beginning and what I'm doing here I'm I printed the black and white version of the photo that I call the classroom on canvas at 36 by 24 inches and coloring in, and I'm coloring it with acrylic glazes so I use golden gloss glazing liquid to make the glazes and mix those with golden acrylic paint I like to use flat brushes for the coloring of various sizes for the, for the largest surfaces that I'm doing here I'm actually using like a it's probably a quarter of an inch that's probably half an inch uh, brush and I made like my own raw sienna mix so I took a little bit of burnt sienna added in some yellow cadmium yellow which gives you more of a raw sienna color and as you also saw at the end of the intro there's a lot of browns and brown yellow brown oranges in the classroom here and so i would like to add that variety of browns first so I'm start with the bigger surfaces first. You see I'm going around like where the sun shines through the window on the floor here. But later I decided to color that too because it was too uh, distracting. Anyway, so with this color you, you don't have to worry too much of going over the lines as a matter of speaking. Because a lot of this room has those colors. But it's always nice to make a lot of variations. So, so I start here with this raw sienna color, but then I will add some more yellow or uh, like burnt umber to get a variety of of different colors. So Bodhi is is very remote. It's at over eight thousand feet in the eastern Sierra. And that has helped a little bit preserving the town. It, is, it has not been as much looted as some of other ghost towns have. So I entered seven buildings. This was the, one of them. And the monitor who was with me, he was actually the ex-supervisor ranger of Bodhi. And he knew a lot of uh, stuff about Bodhi. So most of the buildings are actually not staged. However, I believe the, the, the school building, the classroom here, um, has been mostly staged. So, however, he also told me that um, and one of the rangers told me that too one time, that they will accept donations, uh, but then they make of of uh, artifacts, but then they will check if it was, was if they are from the right era, and then put them inside Bodhi. So here I added more yellow to the mix. However, I, I thought it was a little too intense, so I'm using a paper towel to get rid of some of that color. It was a little bit too much yellow. So, so what I did is I just added yellow to the 
already existing mix, but that also changes the opacity. So it actually gets more opaque the more paint you add. So I added a little bit more of the golden gloss glazing liquid here to again make it a little bit more transparent. And then I continue with that yellowish brown color in the back of the room. This is where the entrance to the classroom is in the back here. And you can see the bookcase over there. You saw that also in the beginning uh, of this video in the intro. To my to the to my right, it's off screen, but I had the original color photo of the classroom on my iPad displayed, so I can kind of follow what it looks like. Um, of course, you can take a lot of freedom coloring photos however you like it. And what I did here, I kind of followed what the original colors looked like. But later I thought it was a little too flat. There, was, there were a little bit too many of the same types of colors. And uh, I added some of my own, which you will you will see later. I have a few other videos of when I colored my body photos, and and some of them I've done with oils on photo paper or with oils on like diluted oil, with Marshall photo oils on photo paper or with my own diluted oils and then added those on a pre-treated uh, matte type of paper. If you ever have the chance to visit Bodhi, I would highly recommend it. You, you cannot just walk into build. There's a few buildings you can walk into, but not all of them. Uh, but you can always look through the windows. And that's what I also used to do a long time ago, but at some point I really wanted to go in. So this is the teacher's hat. Adding some yellow brown to it now and later I add a, one other color to it just to get a little bit of a difference. So you can also see I like to avoid the brightest highlights because if you add color to that, I mean you can, but if you add too much color it, it looks weird. Uh, doesn't look too great so you can see I avoid going over the brightest areas. And it's good to have some variation between the colors that you use in darker shadow shadow areas um, versus uh, brighter highlights. Sometimes it's also a good idea to, uh, even though it's the same surface, but if one part is in shadow, the other is not, to use slightly different colors for those two areas. You might know that, say, shadows in on sunny days, they actually look quite blue. So I like to add some of those yellows, yellow browns to all the papers here on the desk. I'm just sometimes stepping back, looking at the image overall and see where I want to have some more of that yellow brown. So now it's time to add some burnt umber, just like a nice brown. Just take a tad of it, add that into the pre 
and the max we have already. And that goes on the school benches. If you use just one one color for a lot of surfaces, the image actually will look kind of flat, almost like still mon monochrome. I mean, that literally that's what it means, monochrome, one color. So it's good to have some variation, even even if they are very subtle. took this image from the viewpoint of the teacher and I also made sure I have some of the outside scene showing through the windows and this was actually a HDR photo I, I, I think I took five photos got rid of two of them and was left with three maybe a stop in between so I would also be able to catch the outside scene plus the inside and my camera was placed on a tripod here so I had to adhere to a lot of rules uh, going inside the buildings and one of them was a had to fold up my tripod each time I moved, which I mean, I, I get it. Also, I left my backpack outside so I wouldn't bump into anything. I wasn't allowed to, uh, like if you see a cobweb or anything, just leave it. I always find find it interesting to see how a black and white image changes so much by adding color to it. So at the end of the video, I will have like a quicker change going from pure black and white to having the full on colors at the, at the very end. Again, adding some yellow browns to the papers on the desk, but this is slightly different from slightly different color from what I used before. This is the one that has a little bit of that burnt umber in it. And again, I'm adding that mostly to the darker areas and I'm leaving, not touching the highlights. Taking a lot more burnt sienna now. And that's for the wall. Using that color now is probably one of the biggest changes and compared to the other colors I've been using now. Burnt Sienna is one of my favorite colors. I use it a lot. I also use it to add color to beaches and bluffs and cliffs here in Southern California where I live.
Taking a smaller brush now and coloring the vegetation outside. So this was, let's see, the early spring. There was still snow outside, so I'm not coloring everything outside. And most of the vegetation you could see that was yellow with a lot of snow in between. It was maybe a couple of inches of snow in the morning when I got there and then in the afternoon it was all gone. But at this point, when you were in the school building, there was still some snow left on the Bodhi Hills. And now, big change. I always like to put complementary colors in my images. I mean, you could leave it this way, it has its own feel, but I like when you have a mix of warm and cool colors. So I'm adding phthalo blue to the sky, and initially I was putting it on, as I'm doing here, to where that blue is also in the photo, the original color photo, the rest of that glass looked pretty white. But then I thought, eh, it will look better if I add that blue, a little bit more of it, and add it all over the sky here, through the window. And you can see that it already makes a big, big difference, having that blue contrasting with the warmer browns and yellows that I used earlier. And at some point, when I'm done with the sky, the image is pretty close to the original color photo. But I thought it was a little, little too, it, it needed more. So I looked at it and I thought, okay, let's add some blues throughout the interior too. So this is like an old cabinet with drawers, adding some phthalo blue, a little lighter here. And this is when I started adding a little bit more colors throughout the interior. So this book here gets a little bit of blue and then it's I thought it needed still a little bit more, so I also will add some reds and greens throughout the room here, and mostly on the books. This is an old bell that's sitting on the teacher's desk. So it may not look like much doing these little things and the, these little details, add some color to it. But when you look at the, the finished piece, uh, you will definitely notice it and it does make a difference. So now we'll add a little bit of cadmium red. Also to some books. So when you add like pure colors as they come out of the tube, of course, made slightly transparent with the glazing liquid, uh, when you put it on lighter surfaces, you get like the, the full-on saturated color. 
but when you add that to areas with grays underneath then of course you also get it desaturates the colors This is green. I'm still trying to catch some of that glazing liquid I didn't use earlier, next, next to the red. And at this point, we're getting close to the end and now I was getting like happy with the results. Um, Slightly different from the original color photo, but that's fine. I was actually looking for, how do you call it, maybe a little bit more of a happy look as opposed to the original color photo. And also here, like this surface with this little box on the table, I don't add the color everywhere. I'm also doing some little touch-ups here with that green on the on the stove, the bell. And then this is ultramarine blue which is a little bit more towards purple as, in com as compared to phthalo blue. So some of these ink holders will get some little bit of on the stove and a cabinet behind it. And then I looked at it and I thought, okay, that little box with chalks needs a little touch up. Some of that earlier, with some of that earlier yellow. Plus, I also looked at, as I mentioned earlier, I looked at these bright spots on the ground and then on the floor. And I thought, okay, that is a little bit too distracting and I'm adding a slight touch of that color and I, I, and I think that really did it, it really helps the image now. A little bit more variation to the hat. And there was some chalk inside that box. I think they were actually green in the original color photo, but I add some yellow to it. And that that's it. It's done.